This is a disappearing four patch patchwork cushion cover. It's so simple to make. It looks quite complicated, all of those points to match. And if you're new to patchworking, then you might think that's a little bit off-putting. I've got a really easy way to explain for you to make this. I've made it into a cushion cover with an invisible zip. I'll show you how to fit that as well later on. But if you wanted to use these just as blocks to make into a quilt or a table runner or a bed throw, then that's entirely up to you. I think once you've made one little cushion cover like this one, you're going to be hooked and you're going to have throws to match all over the house. And what a great gift idea that would make as well. So let's get on with the sewing. So I've come with four squares of fabric for the front of the cushion cover. Um, I'm going to use black on the back. And of course, I've got my cushion pad and my invisible zip, which I know is a little bit too long. I'll cut that down later on to show you. So the first thing we need to do is to sew these together like so. So I'm going to sew them in twos. So this one, this one, and then the two together like so. So I'm using a quarter of an inch or a six millimeter seam allowance. If you've got a quarter of an inch foot for your sewing machine, then that would be useful. And let's just sew straight down. We can chain piece these, so I'll sew the next two straight after. Save on a little bit of thread there. those open and I'll just press the seams to one side so it seems to want to go towards the plain side if one fab one of your fabrics is particularly light and one particularly dark then press these towards the darker side so it doesn't show through on the lighter fabric Then these two are sewn together. Because I've pressed the fabric in the same direction, when I now sew them together like this, they're facing in opposite directions, and you'll find that it helps to nest the seams together so you get a perfect point in the centre. You can put a pin in there if you wish, just to make sure that your points are going to meet. And this time I'm going to press the seam open. It's not particularly important. If you prefer to press to one side, then that's fine. It will cut down on a little bit of the bulk right in the centre if you press it open though. So there we have our four patch, but this is a disappearing four patch. So let's make it disappear. I'll pull up my cutting mat. I will trim this down to make it square later as well. And take my ruler, my rotary cutter, and I'm going to cut two and a half inches from the center. You could make that narrower if you wish. In fact, let's go for two inches from the centre. But have an experiment. You, you may prefer a wider strip in the centre or a narrower. This isn't set in stone. So I'm turning this all the way around and placing again my two inch mark over the centre seam and cut. Turn it around again and we're going to cut in this direction. So again, that's a little bit twisted. Two inches here. And two inches there. So if I just separate these, you'll now see what we're looking like. 
Then we're going to take these rectangular pieces and just turn them all around 180 degrees. And then we'll sew it back together again. So that's how my design's going to look. So you can see how effective that is, even after just a couple of cuts. So you can really see how effective that's going to be, even after just making a few cuts. It looks completely different, doesn't it? Right, let me move these onto my table. So I'm trying to keep them in the same order. Oh, off you go. Given more room, of course, you wouldn't need to do that. And again, just like before, I'm going to sew in rows of three. So these three together, then these three, then these three. That I need to trim off. I'd normally do that with my rotary cutter, but I'd just put the mat away. That was just a little bit long. We want that to be nice and square. And the same happened with this one. Right, so one, two, three, one, two, three, and one, two, three. Just trying to keep them all, all in the same order. So right sides together again. quarter of an inch or six millimeter seam allowance. There's row one, row two, and again, where you come to, to seams, I'm going to nest those so that the seams match. And then the last set. It actually comes together really quickly. So if it's not a cushion cover that you're making, which in effect only has one block, if you wanted to make lots of blocks and uh, make a quilt out of them, then um, it's one of those blocks that comes together so quickly you're going to be able to make quite a big quilt in a short period of time. So there's my three rows. I'm going to press the seams again. Now this time with the bottom row, I'm going to press the seams outwards. With my middle row, I'm going to press the seams inwards. This is going to help with, those, with the nesting of the seams again. And again, with the top row, we'll press the seams outwards. Now this time, because the strips are a little bit longer, I am going to put a pin right in the centre. just to make sure those points in the centre meet when I reach them. And again, these have been pressed in opposite directions, so they'll, they'll kind of automatically sit together. It makes it so easy. If you want to pin all the way across, then of course you can do. Just line up those seams here. Across that centre point, remember to take your pin out as you approach it. And then this little seam here, and just make sure that matches as you approach it. And then this one goes on the bottom, 
So let's do the same again. Let's just pop that pin in the center. I don't normally pin all the way across, but your choice if you wanted to. And let's sew. we'll give that a press. It doesn't matter whether you prefer to press to one side or press the seams open at this stage. I'm just going to go to one side because it's a little bit quicker. It doesn't make any difference really. Right, when that's nicely pressed I'm going to trim it to make it square. So back out with the cutting mat again. It's quite a large mat there. And I'm just going to trim like down these edges just to make it perfectly square. So I'm not going to re-measure, I'm just going to trim it off like this. It's only by a very marginal amount. But sometimes your fabric does move a little bit as you're sewing, which is perfectly okay. It's not going to spoil the shape or the size of your cushion cover. Right, now I'm going to take my backing fabric and cut that to the same size. So I'll just use the front as a template. So I know that they're both exactly the same size and then we'll put the zip in. Okay, let's put all of this away for now. Whoops. And let's have a look at the zip first of all. So this is an invisible zip. Um, you can normally tell an invisible zip because on the top of the zip you don't see any of the teeth or it's actually a coil. And they usually have these teardrop shaped pulls. Where you're going to sew is actually inside where the coil rolls over. So if you have an invisible zip foot, that will have two grooves down the side and as you sew, it automatically unfurls the coil so that you get that stitch nice and close to it. I'm not going to use an invisible zip foot because most of us don't have one. Um, if you're going to sew a lot of zips, if you're dressmaking, definitely go out and buy one, um, but not necessarily just for the odd zip. I'm just going to use a zipper foot. So to make it easier to find where I want to sew, I'm going to roll the teeth away from the zip tape and press them. And that's just going to keep them out of the way nicely while I'm sewing. So unroll it, give it a press. You're not going to harm the zip by putting an iron over this, just don't hover over it for too long. Again, my zip talking about too long is too long. So I'm going to cut that down to size in just a second. So then let's have the invisible zip foot on my sewing machine. It should be in here. There we go. So this one drops off and this one drops on and I need the needle to go through the left hand side at this moment. So clip that onto the left hand side. Then I'm going to put the invisible zip in between the two pieces of fabric like so. It seems to be picking up every bit of dirt and dust. So again, I know this is too long. So I'm going to leave 
about an inch at each end or two and a half centimeters at each end and just chop the end of the zip off now do be aware that because I've chopped the end of the zip off I can pull that slider all the way off so we just need to make sure that that doesn't go all the way down to the end if you wanted to put a few stitches or a blob of glue on the end there then that's absolutely fine so let's sew it to this side first of all now the way I kind of get my head around how this is going to fit is just to lay everything out so I've got my zip with the slider facing upwards and I want to sew this edge to this edge. So I'm going to flip the whole thing over and line up the edges. I like to use a glue pen to hold this in place. You can pin it if you like. So let's just pop a drizzle of glue all the way down here and lay these edge to edge. Now this is different to when you're um, dressmaking because you'll have a seam allowance that you need to stick to there. But this is only a cushion cover so we don't have a particular seam allowance that's important. Then I'm going to again make sure those teeth are rolled open and sew just inside. Now not so close that I actually touch the teeth because that's very easy to do. They're very easy to completely sew through. Um, but if you do it's not a problem you've got a quick unpick and you can just unpick it again so I'm actually going to start sewing from the top of the zip coil not the end here so that, that little bit is loose so let's open it up and so now if you don't get close enough to the coil you can always go back over this afterwards But I think this is a great way of practicing your zips as well. Invisible zips are so easy when you get the hang of it. I think a lot easier, certainly if you're dressmaking, than putting in a centered or a lap zip. Now you'll never get all the way down to the end of the zip because your slider is in the way. So just keep sewing along that groove for as far as you can go. Now at this point, you can close the zip and just make sure you haven't caught any of the teeth. You'd know about it now if you had. So let's undo this again. And put the second piece of fabric here. So again, I've got, that's now going to be folded under. There's my zip pull pointing upwards. And these two edges I now need to go right sides together. So I'm going to flip all of this over this way. It's just the way that I find it easier. Because it can be a little bit confusing as to which way your fabric's facing, I think, anyway. So let's again put a little bit of glue on here to hold it in place. Right sides together there. And that's going to go along the edge and I'm matching the edges of the fabric here so the ends of the fabric are meeting and then back to the sewing machine and I'm going to drop off the zipper foot and move it over so that I'm on the right hand groove because you always sew the zip from the same direction. So from the top down to the bottom. So you don't turn it around and then go back up again, top to bottom. So the first time you sew, your zipper foot is going to, or your needle's going to be on the left-hand side of your foot. The second time you sew, move it over to the right-hand side of your foot. That's the same if you're using an invisible zip foot as well. You still need to use the different channel. Okay, so I've got the majority of my fabric on this side now which may seem a little odd and just like before I'm not starting right at the end of the zip tape I'm starting at the end of the coil open this up and so so take your time with it it's not a race and 
and again close to those zip teeth but not touching them if you touch them you won't be able to open the zip and just like before so as far as you can up to the zip pull the slider and then stop so now again you can check this is when it, it it all seems a little bit odd there we go it does work but this little bit twists sometimes and now I can close the zip and just make sure I haven't caught any fabric in there so again you can see I'm using a bright red zip and you can barely see it because it's invisible so now let's sew the rest of the seams together so we'll fold this in half move the end of the zip out of the way and you're going to sew from the bottom of the seam up to this point here. So I'm actually going to keep that zipper foot on my machine for now, that's fine. And try and match up the stitch line that you're sewing now right to the end of the seam that you've just sewn. So when you open this up, you should barely see where the seam finishes and the zip starts. If I really part that, you can see there. And then we'll do the same on this end. So I'm just going to move that slider out of the way, fold the two ends out of the way again, and sew from the edge here up to the way you started sewing the zip in. So when the zip's closed, you should barely see it, apart from that little teardrop shape pull. So now I can put my regular foot back on my sewing machine again. Find it. And I'm just gonna press over that actually before I sew the rest of it together. Things always look a bit neater when they're pressed, don't they? Okay, so make sure the zip's open when you sew this part else you won't be able to turn it through very easily so we're going to flip these two over right sides together and sew all around the edge so around all three sides snip across the corners to reduce the bulk and then turn this the right side out and then we'll pop inside our cushion pad the corners right into the corners if you find that you have loose corners a lot of the time when you're using um, hollow fiber pillows or pillow pads cushion pads and the hollow fiber doesn't go right into the points of the corners so at this point if you need to then you could add um, a little bit of toy filler or kapok, just a little pinch and just push it into the corners of the, um, of the cushion cover and just fill them out a little bit. Just got a loose thread there to cut off. So there's my little cushion cover finished. Again with the invisible zip across the top, not so difficult to insert as you can see. 
and I think you've got a cushion cover as I said earlier that looks quite complicated but as you can see from your timing actually it doesn't take very long at all to make right from scratch and remember you can make this any size that you like so a couple of different sizes like the ones I have behind me I think look really nice so you've got an arrangement of different sizes of cushions so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial I'll see you again very soon bye bye